I have some pretty simple philosophies in life, and one of the things I say about housing is that everyone needs a place to live, and everyone needs to pay to live in that place. So one of our challenges is how do we get people who are making $30,000 a year into affordable housing? And currently in the Iowa City market, the vacancy rate for rental housing is 0.6%. And a normal healthy market is 5 or 6% vacancy rate because of people moving and whatnot. Because of the student population in this town and the draw for retirees and a, 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 a money population, the student population in particular, um, it sort of makes the whole market shift. This is a growing gap between the price of housing, whether it's rental or ownership, and wages. And wages have stagnated and housing prices keep going up. The people that we're talking about are the cashiers, the daycare workers, the teachers, um, somebody that's working clerical. They're all service workers, but if they're making twenty-five dollars or $30,000, they cannot afford to hear, live here. The basic definition of affordable housing, regardless of your income, whether you're making $10,000 or $100,000, affordable housing definition says you should not pay more than 30% of your wages for housing. So if you're making $10,000, clearly you can't afford almost anything. But somebody's making $30,000, that would be you know nine or $10,000 for housing. And if they had to rent a three bedroom house, they can't afford it. I'm executive director of Iowa Valley Habitat for Humanity. We try to serve Johnson, Cedar, Iowa and Washington counties. The mission keeps evolving. Essentially, it's safe, decent, and affordable housing. Uh, so what that has traditionally meant is that we would build new housing for families under 50% of median income, and we would sell the house. We don't give the houses away, but we sell them at no profit. And the real secret ingredient is with a no interest loan. So we're both the builder and the banker. And the no interest loan is what makes it affordable. So our homes, $130,000, $140,000 house will cost about $650 a month, and that includes taxes and insurance. You know, a working family just can't do that any other way. So we have a limited audience we serve. Uh, these people have to have good credit. They can't have too much debt, which often disqualifies people. But that's our traditional mission is to do new homes. Lately, we've been doing rehabs. We've been doing ramps to help people stay in their homes. So when I say our mission is safe, decent, and affordable, it could be to get them into that home or to keep them in that home. One of the things that we are looking at in Iowa City is what do we do to provide affordable housing for people? And the Habitat homes are affordable and they're ones that the families are also required to do work on. And so they put in a lot of effort in terms of making sure that they're a part of the build. And we appreciate that. It gives us a chance to get to know them and also seeing their commitment to the community and to making sure that they pay it forward and help others in the future as well. But affordable housing is critical here. We're working with our city council um, to see what we can do to provide more of it for low-income families and to make sure that those young families can, can buy a home and build in Iowa City and be a part of our communities. There's a crisis in affordable housing in this community. The vacancy rate for affordable rental housing is less than 1%. So it is, it is really, for many, many families, a fairly catastrophic situation. Stable, affordable, safe, decent housing is fundamental to a family's success. It is fundamental to children's success in school. And we have got a real crisis. This is a serious problem nationally, but a very critical one in this county. helping with the women's build with the Jean Lloyd Jones home and we're working on building a house for a family uh, and making sure that they have a good home to live in. Many of the family members are helping us today and uh, this is the women in politics build it's the, and the friends of women in politics and so we've invited a lot of our friends and women that are in elected offices to come and help us build today. We're putting up J and F tabs, it's a place for the siding to go into. So up on the ladder um, tomorrow down in Washington County, 
We're finishing up a rehab and siding the home of a wonderful Washington County volunteer down there. So it's good stuff. We've been doing women's build for a number of years and the goal of the women's build, other than building a house, is to empower women to take leadership, to find tasks that they thought they could never do and teach them these new skills and a lot of camaraderie comes out of that. So the women's build, um, we used to just do that and then I realized one day that if we named a women's build after a living woman, uh, two things would happen. She would appreciate it, still being living, and secondly, uh, attention would be drawn from her friends and family and, and colleagues. Uh, so the first year we named it after Dottie Ray and that brought up a lot of attention. And then subsequently, the last four or five years, we've named it after uh, other prominent women in the community. And each time it brings a different group and it widens our base. And I think it creates a network for women that they didn't have before. And it gives them some empowerment. Women Build is an effort that Habitat puts together. It is, a, we have a special board of women who raise the funds for these houses. And really, the Women Build projects are primarily driven by women. Their message really is women can do anything. And so it's an empowering learning. Um, there are women with hammers out here who are several retired teachers, friends of mine who do this all the time. It is their sort of volunteer work. And um, just a, it's an exciting group. And it's so perfect for Jean Lloyd-Jones because women's empowerment has really been what her life's work is. So this is a great tribute to somebody who's always focused on women being empowered. This is the fourth home I've been working on. Um, so this is the fourth year. I've worked with a group called Women with Hammers and it's a University of Iowa Women's Club group that are advocating women in being more empowered and uh, taking charge and uh, helping do things like this in the community. And so they've been building a little free libraries, they've been working on Habitat homes, they've been doing a great deal in terms of, again, giving back to the community, but also being a part of these Habitat homes. And so I'm excited about doing this and glad that I can provide some leadership and some, hopefully, incentive for others to come out and pro provide that help as well. We look at houses from the outside and see the finished product. We don't know the work that goes on with builders in terms of creating that home. And it's kind of fun to see it from the inside out in terms of setting, you know, just the concrete foundation and then how the trusses are put in and how you, you actually build and make a home. So that's an educational opportunity in itself and something that I think is really valuable and exciting to be a part of. If we're gonna build a house and we're gonna be the banker for the family, we wanna make sure they pay their mortgage back. Well, one of the ways to do that is to build a highly energy efficient house. So rather than going to the minimum standard that's required by building code for this is the minimum you have to do to, to insulate, to heating and cooling of this house, we go the next step above. So it costs us an extra four or $5,000, but it's better and more insulation it's better ventilation, so they're not going to have to worry about any kind of spores or any kind of uh, allergies. Um, it conserves the, any heat that would go up the chimney from the water heater or from the furnace. It's recycled, so it's, and we will save that family between 25 and 30 percent on their heating and cooling bill for the rest of their life. So this is a one-shot opportunity to do it right. And what I say to builders everywhere, and there's there's reasons why that doesn't happen, as I say. Why can't we raise the bar for all new construction and pick the low-hanging fruit and do this better insulation and better heating and cooling and better ventilation so that everybody out there pays 25 or 30 percent for their heating and cooling? It would save on their utility bills. It would reduce risk to the lenders because the families have more money to pay back. It would burn less fossil fuel so we don't need as much fossil fuel. It would pollute less. I can drive by the houses we built and know that they're going to be there today, tomorrow, next year. And that's one of the satisfactions I hope that anybody who donates or volunteers with Habitat gets is that they're not donating to a, a cause someplace else. They're not donating to a cause that is a black hole where they won't see the results. This is something that they can help with. They can drive by. The family that's going to live there hardly ever moves. Our families hardly ever move because they want it. They're putting their roots down. They're improving the neighborhood, they're improving the community. All of our families pay property taxes just like everybody else. 
So it's stabilizing neighborhoods and stabilizing communities and it's a lasting investment. It's not a one-off. It's not like you give the money, you don't see the result. This is something you can drive by every day. And I know that like Dottie Ray would drive by the house as it was being built and she drives by it now even after it's built and says, oh, I helped do that. And that, I think that makes people feel good and it makes them feel like, you know, we all want some sort of legacy or lasting gift for the world. And just helping build, helping contribute to a Habitat house is proof positive you can impact something here in your community by doing just a little bit, but being part of a larger whole that helps. And then above that, we tithe 10% of our giving to third world countries where Habitat's in 82 countries around the world. So roughly, depending on the country, 10% of the cost of a house here will build a house in Central America. And we have trips that we can help people go on to go build those things. So you're not only building a house in the neighborhood here in greater Iowa City, you're building a house in Guatemala or Nicaragua at the same time. And you know, we're all, it's all one world, so let's help each other out. If people aren't able to build, we recognize that with the work that's involved here, that that may be above and beyond what some people can do. So we also have places where people can donate because there are lots and lots of opportunities and needs in terms of the build and also with the family. So if people feel like they can't help with building, um, they can certainly donate uh, and make a contribution to the Habitat home. And again, that just is as important as the building. So we hope people will think about that and, and uh, offer their services and help in that way as well. Come to our ReStore and either volunteer or shop. The ReStore is what I call a Goodwill store of big stuff. So furniture and appliances and cabinets. And the important thing is that we don't even advertise for shoppers in our ReStore. We have plenty of shoppers. We advertise for donors. So when people are remodeling their kitchen or their bathroom, uh, don't have your contractor smash the cabinets and haul them to the landfill. That's just wasteful. We have to have donors, whether it's the homeowner or the contractor, think of us Take those cabinets, bring them down to us, and we will give them a tax receipt. And then any of the proceeds we make from the ReStore sales go back to build more homes. So that's another way to be involved. And of course, we're always looking for sponsors of homes, whether it's a room or a, a whole house. And um, it, we have to be both the builder and the banker. So I have to front the money to build the house. And then when we loan it back to the family, the, the Habitat family, it's a 20 or 25 year loan. So that money comes back very slowly. All the money that comes back goes to build more houses, but I have to front the 130, 140,000 up front, and that takes a lot of effort and a lot of sponsorship. We have a lot of working families who are being strained right now. And if they pay too much for housing, they're paying 40 or 45% of their income for housing. That means they're not gonna pay for transportation or have as much money to pay for transportation or medicine or school clothing or all the other things in life, food. All I would do is ask the public to understand that you know we all need a little help every once in a while, you know, and that young family that can't get into housing may benefit from a little less neighborhood opposition next time there's a proposal out there to, to build new, smaller housing. I think we need to step back and take some time and say, how can I help this young, working, struggling family gain stability? Housing is stability, housing is related to almost everything else in life. I've, I've learned over 30 years of working in housing, there is nothing that's not tied back to your housing. Your personal security, is it safe? Where your kids go to school, who their friends are, where you shop, how far you have to commute to work, whether you need a second car, you know. Financial stability, my Lord, if you're buying a house as opposed to renting, Maybe you can retire someday because you might actually own the house someday and build up some equity. It's the best savings account there is out there. But if you can never get into that ownership, then you can't build financial stability. So I like to say housing is tied back to everything that we touch out there in life. You're watching City Channel 4. On TV, online, on demand, on Facebook, and now on the go on your mobile device.